Now moving ahead with our WCF and Web API scores. By now you might have understood that I really believe in moving from practical to theory. Yes, so we have seen few implementation, basic implementation like creating a service, adding a service, hosting a service. Now let us uh, look theory part of WCF. My reaction when I started exploring WCF for the first time, do you know what was my reaction? My reaction was something like this. But you need not to worry. I will make you enjoy learning WCF something like this. So before we uh, start exploring what is WCF and why do we need WCF, we need to understand SOA that is nothing but service oriented architecture. Now what do you mean by service oriented architecture? So I have gathered few points about service oriented architecture and let us see what are those points. It is a reusable component on network. It is a collection of services on a network that communicate with one another. For example, verifying a credit card transaction or processing a purchase order. The services are loosely coupled, meaning that an application does not have to know the technical details of another application in order to talk to it. Services are well-defined platform independent interfaces and are reusable. So I hope you might have understood uh, what service oriented architecture is. So whenever I give this presentation to my student and I see their reaction, something like this. What the hell is this? What, what does this theoretical statement means? I do not understand. So don't worry, let us see SOA practically. So once we understand the things practically, then we will read those theoretical points. And I'm quite sure that you'll understand all those points. Say uh, I have a web server and I have hosted a website on my web server or a web application on my web server. So it will have different layers. So it will have user interface. Then it will have business logic layer that is nothing but business component then your business component will talk to your data component that is nothing but data access layer now my data component will be talking to my database and all the clients will be interacting with ui so basically this is a three layered architecture you might have heard about um, presentation layer business logic layer data access layer now this is my web application. Say for example, I want to develop a mobile application with the same concept. That means you might have seen I have Gmail account as my web application. And the same Gmail account, the same mails I can also view on my mobile that is on Android. So I have mobile application. So I want to develop same on mobile. So I want a uh, web application as well as a mobile application. So what do I need to do for a mobile app? I definitely I need to have different UI user interface, but my business component and data component remains same. So I need to make a copy of business component and data component. And my data component will be interacting with database. So this is fine. But the problem or the issue with this is Whenever I make some changes in my business component, I need to deploy those changes on mobile app. So I want to develop a Windows app as well. So what do I need to do again? See, for example, if you have, uh, you know, uh, have an idea about Outlook, MS Outlook. So MS Outlook is available for Windows. MS Outlook is available as web application and MS Outlook is also available as mobile application. So I need to have three copies. Say tomorrow some third party application, they need to read some mails. So again, I need to make these copies to them or I need to, you know, push these DLLs to that. So what do I want to do here? I want to get rid of copying these DLL, DLLs for each and every application. I want to move them and I will move them to a separate server. 
so i have moved business component and data component to a separate server this could be a web server ias web server or this could be anything a kind of hosting so i have hosted these two dlls on a separate server and my ui is again interacting with business component and my mobile ui is also interacting with the same business component now i need not to have the copies on each and every server so i have a copy on a separate server and my web application is interacting with that and my mobile application is also interacting with that and this data component is in back interacting with database so this is service and i have hosted this service on a server so we call it as a service host so this is a service that i have created and i have hosted it on a server so the dlls i am wrapping up the dlls with a service and i am hosting this service on a server so practically we have seen this in our earlier videos now the advantage of this is my java or php application can also interact with this business component now you see that my application part of my application is on one server and another part is on another server so we call it as distributed application or service oriented architecture so tomorrow if i want to develop a windows app okay i'll have a windows app and i'll use the same business component so this is your service oriented architecture hope you might have understood this and i see the reaction of my students something like this now let us go back and try to understand these points so now you can see that it is a reusable component on the network it is a collection of services on a network that communicate with one another for example verifying a credit card transaction or processing a purchase order so that service i'll create service as a credit card transaction the services are loosely coupled meaning that the application does not have to know the technical details of another application in order to talk to it like my php application wants to talk to my .NET application, that is the DLLs that I have created in .NET, then they need not to know the technical details. Just they need to know what is the class and what is the method that I am going to call. So services are well defined, platform independent. You can see that platform independent interface. That means I can have PHP or Java application interacting with .NET application, and they are reusable. So that's it. Uh, this is all about your service oriented architecture. How do we achieve this? How to implement this? So let us see how to achieve this in our next video. Thank you very much.